Shout out to the We Woke Now family. Thank you for the love and support of this platform. Take a look at this new upload and tell me what you think. Before I play the video and provide commentary, click the like button and subscribe to this channel. Also, click on the notifications so you can stay up to date with our live streams and video uploads. This skull is as close as we can get to what the face of mitochondrial Eve would have looked like. It's a very complete skull found in sediments in a cave dating from about 120,000 years ago. And we can see here that it's a modern human. We've got a high rounded vault to the skull, a face that's tucked in under the cranial vault. And this is what she looked like using forensic reconstruction techniques muscle and flesh have been added to the skull and provide us with the very first glimpse of how our genetic mother might have looked 150,000 years ago. This is the closest we can get. Africa is the birthplace of all the various human species to walk this planet. This vast isolated natural laboratory molded humans over endless cycles of alternating desert and green. And it is the climate records that give us the next clue. Modern humans made many attempts to make the long trek out of Africa, settling in different parts of the old world. But they did not survive. Climatic records indicate a brief but devastating global freeze-up at the time that turned the whole Middle East into extreme desert. Trapped in the northern corridor by the Sahara, there was no return and few places to take refuge. Neither they nor any of their lines survived. They would die in severe drought about 110,000 years ago. Their bones were discovered in Kafse Caves near Nazareth in Galilee in 1933. Thirteen fragile skeletons, one a woman, a tiny baby at her feet. When these bones were first uncovered, they were the oldest complete modern human skeletons ever found. The numerous skeletons that have been found in caves in Israel at the sites of Kafse and Shgul show us that there were modern humans outside of Africa over 100,000 years ago. Those modern humans may well have gone up the Nile corridor through Sinai and into the Middle East. But it doesn't look like they went any further. In a sense, they were a dead end. It would be 40,000 years before they would try again. 80,000 years ago, the world was cooling down again. Once again, the ice caps were advancing, drying out the lands. Life became much harder. As Africa dried up, so did the drinking water. Ocean records show sea levels dropping dramatically as the world's water became locked in ice. As the game spread north, our hunter-gatherers were forced to become fishermen and beachcombers. This is our new Eve, our new family, direct descendants of the daughters of original genetic Eve now living on the coast, surviving on the harvest of the sea. This is our new Eve, our new family direct descendants of the daughters of original genetic Eve now living on the coast, surviving on the harvest of the sea. This is our new Eve, our new family, direct descendants of the daughters of original genetic Eve now living on the coast, surviving on the harvest of the sea. 
According to the team of geneticists led by Dr. Rebecca Kahn and cranium expert of the mitochondrial Eve Gene Project, the Middle East, which is actually Northeast Africa, they discovered a cave full of skeletons in Israel near Nazareth and Galilee of Negroid origins in 1933. These group of Negroes are believed to have traveled up the Nile corridor. According to cranium expert Dr. Samuel George Morton in 1844, in his writing titled Cranium Egyptica on page 60, he says this about the craniums he analyzed that were discovered in the catacombs of Egypt. If it be allowable to make these data the basis of calculation for the past 35 centuries, it will follow that upwards of 10 million Negroes have been brought as bondsmen into Egypt during that period. The vast influx of Negroes into the valley of the Nile must necessarily have left its impressions on the physical traits of the Egyptians themselves. In modern times, as seen in cops and in more distant periods, as proved by the Negroid heads in which both the configuration and expression are too obvious to be mistaken. But it may be inquired, how does it happen that Negroes or their descendants should be found in the catacombs if they constituted a manial or slave caste in Egypt? On page 66, he says, Negroes were numerous in Egypt, but their social position in ancient times was the same that it now is, that of servants and slaves. This confirms Exodus chapter 1 verse 7. It says, And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Filled with who? the same Israelite Negroes who look just like you, who look just like me. Samuel Morton was a racist, but no one has made any attempts to refute his conclusion that the enslaved Negroes during the transatlantic slave trade, or should I say world war, are the same Negroes who were enslaved in ancient Egypt, which we confirmed with scripture. So what's your thoughts? Please be respectful with your responses. But before you post your reactions, click the like and subscribe to the channel. Listen, Genesis chapter 11, verse 10. Explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13. Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the Jacob had 12 sons, for real, and these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10.